It's October the 30th, 2015, on Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And you can find my videos in Fukushima presentations of Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. Okay, let's keep going. Looks like I'm back. Blah, blah, blah. Four minutes into it. Let's burn. Let's go burn the industry to the ground for a little while. <laughs> and so I got off my game anyway. On a good note, we raised another, uh, let me see, $1,400 last night. And so that brings us up to $3,500 towards the TriCaster. And I'll cover that at the end of the video. And so thank you to James and Bill, William and to Penny Lynn in UK. And James and Bill are in um, Australia. And we actually got more headlines in Australia coming up today. So we better start moving. Uh, I hate it when the video starts off with some kind of screw up. We work so hard to get all that equipment so that doesn't happen to us and then they knock us down just as we get our groove on. You know, we spent 260 days on the ocean, so I was a little pretty rusty. You know, just getting back into up to speed after coming ashore, you know. Let's keep going. That ain't gonna stop me or slow me down or anything like that. Except for the beginning of this video. GOP explores ways around Obama's nuclear waste decision. If that doesn't want to make you to jump up and scream and yell and curse, I don't know what would. They're looking for a side door to open a nuclear waste dump at Yucca Mountain. I see Starlight was having a quick cup of tea, so I had one too. And it's really hot. So didn't let the tea bag stay in there very long. And it's got dandelion in it. And so I normally boil water, but I've been a bit slack lately. After President Obama scrapped the project in his first term. Let me keep going. I'll give me groove on in a second. And so did I miss a headline that time? No, let's keep going. I got no idea what happened there. So if the birth rate remains at the current level, and that's not in context for some reason, Japan's population will be around 80 million in 50 years and 40 million in 100 years. Abe said at the panel's first meeting in the Prime Minister's office, 40 million in 100 years, in your dreams, in your dreams, in your dreams. Japan is radiated from one end to the other end. You have three melted, 100% meltdown reactors. We've never even seen a single one on this planet. Chernobyl uh, was a candlestick. One third the size, a 30% meltdown, using mixed oxide fuel, stopped after 10 days. They sent in a million people. Chernobyl was using graphite. Fukushima, rather, was using mixed oxide. And mixed oxide is two million times worse than graphite. And or any current reactor on the planet, so it's probably 600 million times worse than the graphite. The current reactors on the planet are not using graphite. So let me switch gears for a second. So these reactors, if they don't get water for a few hours, I always say 90 minutes, and that's an accurate number. But here's uh, just after the earthquake and the tsunami in Japan, one of the CNN apologists, let's hope this video works. Who knows today, man? <laughs> anyway, here we go. I would say this will not reach the level of Chernobyl. Uh, and Chernobyl is a lot of radioactivity. Like I said, a hundred times Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. Now, Three Mile Island, uh, it, it, that might be more in the realm of where this could go if the safety systems fail. If they lose power to those, uh, that, to that reactor or to any other reactors uh, past a few hours from now, uh, you might reach a Three Mile Island uh, situation. I would say this will not... So what he's saying to you is the reactors would be like uh, Three Mile Island. Well, Three Mile Island was a meltdown within a couple of hours. And if it lasted a few more hours, then it's Chernobyl. If it lasted a few more hours, it was unprecedented. And if they didn't get water and they didn't, how could they when 500 miles of the coastline is washed away? And how can all the reactors on the entire coastline get water when the entire infrastructure is washed away and that people are running for their lives and that there is no 
How are you going to go down and fix something when there's 50 feet of water coming through your country? Right? That's all I'm saying. But anyway, let's keep going because that headline is out of context for some reason. And I don't know what's going on there now. <coughs> Let me go back into this bloody thing here and see what's going on here. Wasaga Beach Council voices opposition to nuclear waste dump plan. This will all start to make sense at some point, I'm sure. Wasaga Beach Council voices opposition. And this is about putting a deep geological repository near near Kil Kincardy, Carden, and giving it a close proximity to Lake Huron. That's a really sophisticated way to say, and they're going to put it alongside one of the biggest freshwater drinking supplies on the planet, bar nothing. For Canada and, and North America, it's probably the one of the probably the biggest one in North America, and they want to put it all, you know, a mile away. Then we find out it's like a half a mile away. Then we find out it's like a quarter mile away. And they want to do it because they think that big batch of water. And so they know this stuff is going to leach out. They know these containers break apart. I mean, this is, they know that they're not, they don't say that this is not going to happen. They say that, but you just don't hear about it. They don't say it out loud, but it's in the documentation. Ontario Power Generation says the facility will be more than a kilometer. A kilometer. There's a lot less than a mile, see? And they used to say miles. And 680 me, uh, meters under the ground. So 2,000 feet under the ground to put mop heads and gloves and clothings. What? Now notice how they always do that to you. And then when there's an accident or an event 10, 20, 30, 40 years later, we find out that there's drums and barrels and trucks buried under the ground. They ran away and left it there. High level waste every single time. When they talk hundreds of meters under the ground, it's high level waste. And if it's not, if it's not high level waste, why are you putting it so far under the ground if it's just transgenic waste, nothing to worry about? Everything seems to be just gloves and mops and hammers. All the tools are stolen and sold on eBay and everywhere else immediately. We covered those headlines yesterday and time, many times before about how they steal out of these facilities. Let's keep going. I'm off my game today. Explosion and fire! Fire! From hammers and saws and, you know, transgenic waste, right? And so these people, are, everybody that works in the nuclear industry is a demented, lying, twisted, horrific, mass murdering uh, sack of doodle. -doo. Every single one of these doodos, these blurp blurps. Blurp blurp means I'm not, that's kick, not swearing my cursing and screaming and kicking and yelling. So near Beatty, right? We covered this before, but 40 acres surrounded by a 400 acre buffer zone because there's nothing bad there. It's just transgenic, right? We, ah, it's, it's fine, right? But we better put a 400 meter buffer zone in there. Now, they, they put a normal dump alongside of it, and then the people that are working there, most of these people are just slaves, and they just do what they're told all day. But there's another crew there that they don't mingle with, and they're mixing the stuff and burning it in your community. That's why they put a, a real dump alongside a, a nuclear waste dump. There's no other reason to do that, see? And so then the leaching that comes down there, the people working at the dump are told, oh, no, no worries, that... That stuff over there is fine. What you're seeing here is all from this waste dump, this town waste site. Meanwhile, it's the leaching coming right across there, pulling up right there, and then getting the slaves, the, the, the local community employees who don't know any better, who's desperate for a job, who don't even have a clue what they're dealing with. They take the word, and most of their bosses don't even know. There's only a few people on site would know that at best. And so the fire began in a trench associated with the 1970s burial of waste. The fire began in a trench associated with the 1970s burial of the waste, according to one state official. However, the state took money for every truck, 
but they lack detailed information about what is buried at the site. This is a local, because they're still in the community, is why that headline came out. It's because they're still prominent. It's because they're st they still want to maintain their status quo. That's what's going on. They want to maintain their status quo. And that if they get out at even their own families and friends and loved ones and associates and, and acquaintances and just schools and institutions in that community will all of a sudden look at this person as a monster. And so they put out, however, the state has lacked the detailed information because the cheerleading lapdogs still want to get their pensions and still want a free ride and don't want to be held accountable for the crimes they committed when nobody was looking. Okay, blur, blur. Keep going, Dana. But a shutting down required the consent of the Nevada Board of Health because they wanted to close down this dump before. And so the radioactive waste doesn't need a fire to catch fire. It just needs oxygen. That's why the noble gases are called noble gases. Money to decommission San Jose's nuclear plant used instead to store waste on site. To the point that there's so much waste there, if you have an event there, it's going to destroy the entire country. They don't know what to do with it. They know that you won't be around to hold them accountable when everything goes to crap. In their theories, when they've done all this originally. But most of the people responsible for all the misery we're suffering are still alive. And that their, their loved ones, their friends are still in business. And making a fortune off this material. And that the government steps in and the EPA and Atomic Energies and then the nuclear apologists and the nuclear PR firms and the pro-nuclear 100% all the media is pro-nuclear. They can't exist. You cannot be a mainstream media without being pro-nuclear. There is no anti-nuclear in the mainstream media because they'll get torn to shreds with their manipulations and their propagandas because they are one and the same as the nuclear industry. You got Ken Buesler down there right now. I just watched another interview last night. And here he is, he's saying, every fish got strontium in it. Every fish got cesium in it. But every fish got a lot more polonium into it, 210. Now, polonium 210 is natural causing, but it's a bigger concern. And so it's people like this that when they say that, they show up on every platform on the planet, every media on the planet propagates them out there, and that has to be derailed. And that the people behind them are the ones that are responsible for him showing up and Jay Cullen, which is Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, and the, the dean of UVic in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. You want someone to blame, that's who you blame. You want someone that's accountable, that who is accountable. We get big enough, we can get 100,000 people to phone them up, pick up the phone, and put the number up here right now. We're going to out these people. We're going to wreck their entire future. So they're going to attack me. And they have the resources. They have computer software programs throughout those universities. They have lawyers throughout the university. They have the old chum school, the secret clubs throughout that university. They have unlimited funds because that's why they exist, is to come out and attack any opposition to the mass genocide. Fukushima, Fukushima is an extinction-level event for the entire planet. Let me keep going because otherwise I'm going to not get to Fukushima. It's 1047. We've got 13 minutes to whip through this stuff. It's never going to happen. Coastal Commission, okay, seaside storage of spent San Ofre nuclear fuel because they can't decommission the plant anyway. And so, yeah, just put it down by the ocean. There's nowhere left on the site to put the nuclear fuel. Let's put it all down by the ocean. Let's put their dead bodies down by the ocean hanging from a pole is a more just solution. Let's take away their pension. Let's, take a, let's throw their families out on the street is a better solution, is a proper solution. Their entire existence is predicated upon bananas and potato chips and walking in the sunshine. It's time, time to start feeding it to them. It's time to start getting back in their faces. Immediately. Proactively. It's time to stop apologizing for not making a stand, for not being a human. It's time for people 
to God up. We have to do something. Standing by twiddling our thumbs. What we're doing is fantastic. What we're doing is educating. What we're doing is is making people come to terms with it. What we're doing is showing them the actual devastation. And what I'm doing at the beginning of each of these shows is just a tip, a tip of the headlines of yesterday's headlines. Nuclear workers to be honored. To be honored for waste in their communities, for releasing isotopes in their community, for six times more cancer around a nuclear power plant. Six times more likely if you're a woman to get breast cancer. They get an award for all of that. For children getting 20% times more likely to get leukemia for being close to a power plant. And they're getting an award for it. Because they know that if they don't do stuff like that, these people will commit suicide. Miners help. Symposium draws a big crowd. Nuclear plant lawsuit settles contractors exit project. Hang on. Miners help. Symposium draws a big crowd. And so you got all these people with serious injuries from the nuclear industry and have been ostracized, but they got huge unions. And this is the union basically sanctioning these things. That's why they show up in the media. So the union can get more money from the government to pay for the welfare of their future employees. Meanwhile, they're going to suck as much as percentages of that as they can. Right? They're going to suck that back into their pocket. The lawyers will cannibalize a lot of it. And then the injured workers will have next to nothing. And that they won't get the proper treatment. They'll get you. They will. They won't get the proper. You know. Th this is how that whole system works. They steal money in the lieu of helping people, and then they steal all of that money. That's how th everybody in the industry works on that theory. Every PR firm, Jay Collin, Ken Buesler, Ian Goddard, you know, Jim James Colbert, uh, the Colbert Report. All of these people. These are PR firms, 100%. Like James Colbert got Fukushima update, but you can see him in videos after saying, I don't know why everybody's worried about Fukushima for. But if you are, you can go over to my son. I got Ken Buesler and Jay Cullen there. They'll tell you there's nothing to worry about. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why is everybody always picking on nuclear? They just kill a Pacific Ocean, so what? I mean, these people couldn't get a job anywhere else. Only lying. They can't get a job anywhere else only manipulating. They can't get a job anywhere else only deceiving. You make a video and you get a thousand bucks for lying. Specifically for a specific lie. At a specific point. At a specific time. When all the other media is coming out with the same media. And all the alternative runs over to see what James got to say. He's going to feed it to him the same stuff with just a slicker approach. And you can go over to So like if you don't believe in Fukushima, why would you have Fukushima update? It's the stupidest thing imaginable. And then feed you to PR firms only. That guy got to go. And by the way, you know, Luke Rudinsky, we are changes down in Japan. He was there for two days. Now he's in the Philippines and put out another video in the Philippines. And said, oh yeah, we're going to do a documentary on Fukushima. But you're only in Japan for two fucking days. Excuse the language. It's just so absurd. And that everybody's going to run out with his, his documentation. Whatever he puts out, I'm going to go through it with a toothbrush. I guarantee you, that guy is rotten to the core. His best friends is Jane Colbert and, and um, Dan Dix and people like that. These are the, the alternative media PR firms. It's like Everything is scripted for you. Your media is scripted, and then when you go looking for alternative media, the majority of that is scripted. And it's very slick. And they'll show up at the PR firms. We'll put them out there. And that's how you know they're a PR firm. Under the deal announced Tuesday, reactor designer Westinghouse Electric Company will buy the nuclear construction business, Chicago Bridge and Iron, for 229 Under the deal. Because this is how tricky these people are. They're swinging. Right? All this money is there. they got to find out how to get their hands on it. See? Lawsuit. Lasso! Every community should sue you and every employee at that site. Like the employees at that site are getting 120000 a year. Dollars. And credit cards and gas cards and you name it. Free vacation. Number one medical. Because they can't have nuclear plant employees getting cancer. And if they did get cancer, it has to be from somewhere else. And they'll spend a million dollars. And all kinds of PR firms will come out 
and claim it was somewhere else. We've seen Alex Jones, right? They had the guy from the East Coast of Canada saying that a guy at Hanford, one of the most toxic waste sites on the planet who got cancer, got it from years before from deer hunting on the East Coast of Canada from a deer that was contaminated from Chernobyl. It wasn't from Hanford. And so these are just disgusting, pathetic, manipulative, lying, sexist shit, yeah? Alex Jones saying the other day, and he's going to get pounded over the next couple of weeks. I'm going to come out and destroy that guy over the next couple of weeks. Let's put that out there right now. I got me eyes on Jones now. And I'm pissed off. And I already got folder after folder of him on his nuclear talks. And I'll show you how he manipulated everybody. And it ain't going to be pretty. Georgia Powers, and that's the problem. If they're an apologist... I can't ignore it. It doesn't matter how much good they're doing with one hand. If they're out there friggin' lying about the nuclear, then they're fucking my enemy, period. Till the end of time. Georgia Power, which owns 46% of the plant, will pay $350 million. They'll pay 38 electrical cooperatives across Georgia will pay $230 million. But you can't even get a Geiger counter in the community. Now, all these people can get hundreds of millions of dollars, millions of dollars, 2.5% of this, 4.5% of that, 7% of this. They can get endless amounts of money given to them. The government will bail them out. They're too big to friggin' fail. But if you ask for a Geiger counter in your community, if I ask the government, like, down there for money, so I want to put a Geiger counter in my house, because I live close to the power plant, and I want to feed that out, they would be like, pfft. If you, if you call us again, we'll get our lawyers to sue you. And then they'll put the, all the watchdogs, they'll put you on a list, national security list, homeland security will start checking you everywhere you go. Police will start stopping you when you're driving down the road. And this whole system is designed to muzzle you, to self-censor you. How do you like this one? Drivers too drunk to consent, get the evidence thrown out. Too drunk to consent. <laughs> I wonder whose kid that was got that precedent set. Which nuclear power plant did his daddy have accolades for? Which university did he go to? They set that one up. Sometimes I do shit like that. Georgia Supreme Court ruling earlier this year has created a legal trick. Yeah, a trick. By which drunk drivers are getting key evidence thrown out by being arguing they're too drunk to friggin' consent. <clears throat> so what, you have sex with a drunk girl now? And you're too drunk to consent? It's just crazy. <laughs> it's just... How about if I go in and I buy an automobile or I buy a toaster at Walmart and I'm too drunk to consent? Can I bring it back? I broke it because I was too drunk to consent to take it. I bought a blow-up doll and I was too drunk to consent. Yeah, it's slightly used, but I want my money back. If it sounds ridiculous for a defense attorney to argue that his or her client was too intoxicated, you should hear what the nuclear PR firms are doing to you every day, all day, constantly lying and manipulating you. Don't feel bad about the poor frigger got away. He'll kill somebody one of these days and get a year's in jail. You know, if you kill somebody drunk driving, you go to jail. You're a bank manager or stock uh, portfolio. You get out of jail, you can get it all back, have everything back. You get caught with a joint in one of these businesses, you can never get a job in the industry again. It's the most bizarre thing imaginable. We got to end it. It has to go. It got to go. The Constitution's the Bill of Rights, the Magna Carters say we got to get rid of these creeps. That's our obligations. Got to watch me all start yakking and rappling and a little bit about making up words. Gas makes nuclear power. People, stupid. C, B, and I is having a good day on news that is selling off his nuclear power plant construction business to Westinghouse Electric. Oh, we just covered that one. That's another headline. Maybe it's not. Who can't even remember anymore? Let me see. See, there's points I'm supposed to make in this, but because the music was too loud... I got off my game. It ta that's all it takes. You know, hacking my computer and saying F you Dana on my screen and then taking down a couple of days ago. 
gets me off my game. I, I spent all the rest of the day, all day yesterday, getting this laptop up to speed so I can come out and get a break each day and not have to hustle to get a stream out there. Let me go. Keep going. I lost track. Renewable energies in Germany generated almost double the amount from nuclear. Think about that. In less than a couple, four and a half years, they're generating double what they were doing with nuclear. Yeah? And so I can't do well on that stuff. Let's burn through about... We only got a couple of minutes. I got to switch gears to Fukushima. Germany pays the price of switching off to nuclear power. Right? This was the pro-nuclear coming out trying to demonize Germany because they made some uh, landmark... Uh, you know, some... After four and a half years, they're double what they're producing by nuclear. So nuclear got to come out and spin it. But Japan's nuclear in choices. Hang on. I lost track of it. So the Kagoshima Prefecture renewing initial operation. Oh, I missed that headline too. So what they're saying was that... So this... Uh, Called Kagoshima Prefecture. I was looking that up, and that's in a little cute sac on the north end. And so, if, if I was going to anchor my boat along that coastline, where that nuclear power plant would have been a good spot. And because the currents would shove everything into that coup de sac that was across from it, and a lot of that wouldn't have ended up at that nuclear power plant itself, causing big damages from the tsunami. That was a good. It's just where the, where the ocean current comes in off the open ocean, comes around big masses of land, but there's still huge volumes to pull it through. And so, like, I just spent 260 days on the ocean, on the expeditions for life, looking at the damage of Fukushima's on the coastline. And I'm just telling you how I anchored a boat because of, I can get caught in 60, 70 mile hour winds. I was out there for five months at a time. And so these are the spots I would chose to hide away in big storms is where that nuclear power plant was. And apparently they're going to try to restart that. Everything else on the coast was slammed with tsunami debris and started to melt down. That one might have been one of them that got away with it, but still had major damage, right? So the Prime Minister of Australia, and he floated a nuclear... I mean, the shanikins... I shouldn't use that word because the shanikin out there... But the, the industry down there, they're lying to the Australian people on such on such a large scale, on such a shocking scale, and to the general population and all the media. It's really, you know, Turnbull said, it's perfectly reasonable for South Australia to look to create a nuclear industry. And he even suggested strongly, and they're pushing this, that Australia could process, uh, process nuclear fuel rods, export them, and then take them back and bury them in secure locations. There is no secure location on the planet. There is nowhere on the planet to put that stuff. That is one of the major problems with this stuff. A pound of this stuff can kill everybody on the planet in 1,500 increments every 20 minutes. And it can kill every animal when you got rid of all the humans with a single pound it is. And you plan on burying it all over your country. And that is, is shown that when you bury it, then uh, the it turns into a nuclear chain reaction at some point on its own down the road. And that you have to be able to constantly upgrade the containment. You can't. That a pound of this stuff is so dangerous. And that the solutions they got now are not solutions. They're the best they can come up with, but there are no solution on the planet from any country. Russia or China or India or Israel or Pakistan or Canada or America or any of the other nuclear proliferation monsters out there. These are the worst that our society could offer. Anybody that suggests that Australia could process nuclear fuel rods, export them, take them back to bury them, is by definition evil, is by definition maniacal, is by definition a danger. These are dangerous people. Very, very dangerous people. And that they, they're smart people, they're intelligent people, they're extraordinarily articulated and well-educated and privileged and that they have access to technicians and scientists and nuclear experts, and that they come out and tell you a lie. They couldn't tell you the truth. And then they forced it on you. And that's what they're doing in Australia. This is what they've done in every other country on the planet. This is exactly what they're doing in Australia. It's humiliating that society can't get it right one single time. 
that a single place on the country because now Australia becomes hopeless. Now Australia is no salvation for the rest of the planet. Australia right now, without the nuclear waste sites, they got their own reactors, test reactors in, in some of the institutions. I'm not sure how many. Oh, we got uh, oh, we we got uranium. The whole planet got uranium. You moron! Why don't we process? Cause you're an idiot. Having people before you are not idiots. I should say people before you are looking at you now and despising you because you're because we've argued about that in there many 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 times over decades. No, we don't want it here. You finally got a nuclear reactor there. Everybody's making easy money. Then he come in with a whole bunch of money and says, hey, you can scoop all of that, man. You can steal all of that. You can steal all the money from the taxpayers. You can get all this land. You can be a prestigious person. We'll put you on a pedestal. We'll give you a Nobel Prize next year. Say yes to nuclear. Anyway, let's go to Fukushima. But, but Australia, look at this. What the freak is that? What is that? Look at it. It doesn't even have a soul. Look at it. It doesn't even have emotions. Look at it. Look at it. If you see that on the street, you get to the other side of the street. You teach your children. That's in the mall. They run screaming, Ah! Out of the mall. It's Abe. He's going to eat me. That's um, what Abe does. Is he he eats, eats your children. He eats them from the inside with nuclear waste and nuclear isotopes. And nuclear, 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies from nuclear being in their bodies and from the cancers. Abe's a mass murderer. And look at all these people here. What the fuck is that? I got to get this light perfect. Look at these people. Look at that girl. Look, she got a sm kind of a smile on her face, I suppose. But these people here, they don't need Halloween costumes. To be scary. That's what these are. These are scary people. They know what they're doing. They know what they're ramming through. They know what the implications are. They know that they couldn't exist in the world without being evil. Because nobody would have them. Abe convenes pan panel to tackle low birth rate and aging population. A key advisory panel of intellectuals and cabinet members. Boat leaking, chair leading, lapdogs for the nuclear industry is what you meant, Abe. That's English for anybody out there that don't speak nuclear. So let me run on straight South Australia one more time. Liberal MP offered to store uranium waste on his farm. Can you get any more cokier than this? He's going to have his teenage daughter there with a 12 gauge guard. This side of terrorists don't get it. But he need an extra billion dollars every two years because she's got a big cocaine habit. Just like him. Now, so look, people that, that's my antiques, I know, but people doing this, listen to what he's just said. Like he, so he's, he's trying to say to everybody, it's harmless. That is, it's no, nothing to worry about. There's uranium all over the world. This stuff is refined. This stuff has gone through a chain reaction. A pound of this stuff will kill everybody in a theater with 1,500 people in 20 minutes. Everybody in the front row in a minute. You want to store it on your land so you can have some massive 100 year flood come by. And you can never get back down there again. You have an accident, just like Whip, you can never get back down there again. Just like Hanford, you can never get into those places again. Just like every nuclear accident, Chernobyl, you can never get in there again. Just like Fukushima, you'll never get in there again. But this is the stupidest, most demented, most twistedest, most bent out of shape piece of dump. Look at this guy, Philip Corey. Can you imagine how disgusting that person is? Can you imagine what kind of lack of morals that person has? Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull would be vastly more complicated and politically difficult. Yeah, but I'd do it if you let me. i do it. I don't care. I ain't scared of no nuclear... But well, why don't you go down to Chernobyl and show us how it's done? Why don't you go down to Fukushima and let, let the homeless go take a break and pick up that shovel? Because you're a coward. Because your wife beats you every day. 
because she's disgusted with you and that's the only way she'll put up with you coming home each night is that you let her beat you up because you're a sadist. Radioactive ear emissions. Okay. You know what? Maybe we're... Let me keep going. Because I never finish off a folder anyway, no matter what I want to do. Let's keep going. Would you be surprised to find out that New York State is and always has been a source of uncontrolled radioactive aerosols and gas releases into the environment? And would you be surprised to know that you're actually breathing it in right now? And would you be surprised to find out that this kind of radioactive ear exposure contributes to more than 200 millirims radiation dose to the average American per year? And twice of that allowable for a non-radiation worker at a nuclear facility. Let me keep going. Would you be surprised to find out that if this is preventable for those willing to pay the price to avoid it? Does anybody know what he's talking about? Does anybody have any clue what that meant? Because he don't... It turns out that this is due to the nature of our environment and that the crust of the earth is a few parts per million uranium. So how would you get rid of it if the whole earth is a full few parts per million, you know? But what he's doing here, and even more thorium. These are two words I hate. Natural uranium, natural thorium, besides the word natural potassium, sends me into a frenzy every time he hears it. By which are radioactive elements and are as natural as water, soil, and air. So if I had a pound of soil, a pound of water, a pound of that air, it won't kill the 1,500 people in the theater. But if it's processed from a chain reaction, and I have a pound of that soil or that water or that air, it kills everything in the theater in 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, till the end of time, till everything is gone. So these elements decay in more radioactive elements and so on, eventually becoming radium. But man-made stuff will never become radium. Man-made stuff will always decay for infinity even though it might only have 10 half-lives, because it's got an extra man-made electron added to it, it is no longer from this, uh, this Milky Way universe or from this planet Earth. It's not created by the sun. The sun doesn't add that electron we do, we do through a, a chain reaction that is not a true chain reaction, but through a process that they claim is a chain reaction. The sun is a chain reaction. The sun creates our periodic table. Our but we take the periodic table and we take each one of them, we add extra electrons with a neutron bombardment. And that's why our body gets cancer. That's why the ocean is dying from Japan's constant, endless, perpetual hemorrhaging. Japan will never stop because we won't try. Japan will never stop because we are lied to about natural stuff. We can't even have a conversation with somebody. But let me keep going. These elements decay more radioactive elements till they become radium. Radium itself decays into radon, which is both a noble gas and radioactive. No, it's not. It can't mutate a fruit fly, but if I take a single atom from Japan or Chernobyl or any of the nuclear power stations hemorrhaging into your community, that atom will mutate the fruit fly. That atom will mutate the plants. That atom will mutate the fetuses and the larvae and the eggs and the small fries of any of the species on the planet, all 8 million species. But this natural stuff can't. Radion decays in a series of heavy metals, which are also radioactive. They're not radioactive, they're emitters. They're natural emitters. And they emit about one ten thousandth of a million, one ten thousandth of a millimeter. So if there's an atom on the head of this stuff, and there is, and my body can't hold any more atoms of that stuff than it already has, and if I eat and I eat food with natural atoms, uh, what the confusion is all about, the deception is all about, the way they're manipulating everybody, this is how they're doing it, is you call the 260 natural emitters on the planet, and you equate that with the to tens of thousands of man-made radioactive materials that we've created. And so you always, that's how they do it for 70 years. And that's how it comes to so, such a big confusion, and because they insist that potassium is the emitter. But a potassium can't emit, and you won't see a potassium nuclear reactor. You won't see a radon nuclear reactor. You won't see a thorium nuclear reactor without being enriched through the 
the chain reaction. So you can take anything. You can take this mouse and irradiate it. And now you've got these atoms. Now if you aerosol it, these atoms now are irradiated bombardments. So it doesn't matter what the periodic table, but what it is is you can add more isotopes into that atom from the different bombardments of plutonium and uranium and tens of thousands of isotopes they create as a byproduct of uranium and plutonium used at these high heats and with these maniacal systems. Now, if you think about nuclear, just think about all the chemicals associated with it that they use to separate the, the uranium and plutoniums. And then that stuff is put in your landfills. That stuff, is, and it's just called chemicals. It's just called waste. No, no, that's not the yellow cake. And so it's all coming to a head anyway. Let me keep going. In fact, because radioactive decay results in less radioactivity over time, the, few, the further back you go, the more radioactive things become, including us. The scientific literature is pretty clear that life is designed to operate in a radiation field similar to those found in the biosphere today, actually a bit higher. Science also tells us that another primordial radioactive element is fact essential to life on Earth. Yeah? And last but not least, it allows scientists to carry out carbon dating organic material for archaeological applications. Last but not least, exposure to radon is in a strict sense entirely preventable, as mentioned above, but you would have to walk around wearing something like a gas mask continually as well as sleep in one. That said, it's probably safe to say we are designed to handle this well enough without protection, given that these things on Earth have always been that way. And so Robert Hayes is an associate professor of nuclear engineering. But what he's doing there is he's telling people that he's equating all the natural stuff that we just talked about with man made with an, elect an extra electron. All of the stuff there doesn't have those electro electrons. That's why we have terrorist sites. That's why we have nuclear terrorist laws, nuclear waste sites, repository. We don't have a waste site anywhere on this planet. We have nuclear repositories. Temporary holding areas. Because it's not like... Okay. Just calm down, Dana. They're just going to kill the Pacific Ocean in Japan. That's Japan's model. That's based upon six years, based upon just a couple of days' releases. It's not based upon the ongoing, constant, endless, perpetual releases that Japan is perpetrating up here on this planet. And it's not based upon, um, you know, that's the drinking water standards for Canada now. Strontium 98. Look at the tritium, 7,000 becquels a liter. But look over here, uh, radium 226, 0.5 becquels a liter for millions of years. But now we got 7,000 becquels a liter. So when he said we're, we can probably handle more, this is what he was saying subconsciously and implying that no matter how much shows up, of the artificial radionucleoids. Don't worry about it. You're, you're designed to deal with it. But you're not designed to deal with this. This is why it says artificial. This is Canadian health drinking uh, water standards. Go to the site, scroll down, and you'll see that. They added that in there and never told us why. Never told us how come. Never said it's dear. Never said anything. Uh, and like... There's not 40 million becquels of potassium or radon or thorium in that liter uh, or that, that uh, bed of kelp. No. That's from Fukushima. 40 million becquels. Now, that stuff could be from the nuclear dumping off the coastline. I don't know. Because you got to realize how much they dumped off the coastline of California. you got to realize that we know there's 55,000 barrels you know, like 45-gallon drums directly off the coastline of uh, San Francisco in that uh, bunch of island groups. They turned it into a re uh, into a reserve uh, for animals and birds and everything because they don't want humans over there because they know what they got done because they know they can't put it in a sarcophagus or a container. 
So they just dump it off the ocean. But they told you, oh no, it's on a nuclear waste site being taken care of. You can go out there right now with your underwater cameras in the shallow water and you'll find it. It won't take you very long. Go look it up. Get in your boat. Go out there. You'll find it. They got barrels of it all over your coastline. They got pipes running out of your nuclear plants directly into your ocean. There is nothing good about the nuclear industry. There is nothing honest about, about the nuclear industry. Unprecedented spike of 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur per meter was detected in the California year. You only got to breed one of those 1,500 buckyballs. That's what the sulfur is. It's a, a sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyball created by spraying salt water for 40 days on the reactors. And so if you... It works this way. <coughs> like a piece the size the tip of your finger, the very half the tip of your fingernail, that's about a gram of this stuff, and that's a million watts. So a million watts, if you go in your bathroom and you got a heater in a little room, say, it's not a very it's like a fifteen hundred watt heater. But put a three thousand watt heater there and turn it on, close your windows, it'll cook you. Well, this thing can do that for nine months. And it can do that, uh, 333 of them. That's a million watts. But that, 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 same, that same package that they created from refined from 400 tons of coal and massive quantities of chemicals and water contaminated and then all that coal is turned into waste because they got to separate it with chemicals to get the uranium out. And then the byproduct of cesium is a good example. And then a gram of that is more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. And what that will do to you is that's enough cancers. Each one of them distributed out will kill everybody on, and every creature on the planet. But it takes 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years to, to show up. And so it's hard to punch your finger at a nuclear plant when you got cancer down the road. Ah, oh, you know, um, friends of mine used to smoke in their own, or friends, or I used to eat red meat, or, or I eat GMO, right? It's going to be really hard to point it back. But they can identify an isotope from Korea, from North Korea. Oh, that isotope, they're doing a weapons testing. We know that came from North Korea. But you can't identify the cancer and say it came from Fukushima or San Ofre or Bruce in Ontario or any of the 25 nuclear reactors in Canada. No, 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 no. But we can tell it came from North Korea, though. We can go down and bomb the sure, bomb the shit out of them down there. So 1,500 atoms per cubic meter. That's where your children are walking and standing up. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Atoms sequestering in your organs and your muscles and your bones. And it'll show up real soon. Dr. Raymond Gilmetti's Respiratory Research Institute, Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. This is a site I've only seen about six times on the entire coastline of Canada in 260 days. Think about that. Should be about 1,000 to 5,000 birds per square mile. Out of uh, 260 days, I've only seen this about five times. So Abe's butt plugs are nuclear power, and that's why he won't give it up. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. So Fukushima radioactive uh, releases were so great, the radioactive aerosols in Washington were up to 1,000 times normal. 100,000 100, times normal. There's, there's, and so normal is a frightening number. Because they include the natural stuff, and right, in order to muddle the water, so there's a lot of numbers, see? But when you compare it to these numbers, it's 100,000 times. It's an invisible cloud throughout your entire country. Right? And this is what it looks like. Just two isotopes from a short release. Now, you got to realize, once again, a gram could produce this kind of uh, model. A gram. Because it produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on the planet. And what will 5 million pounds? What will 380 assemblies with 80 rods in each assembly that are 18 pounds each create when a gram? Just do, do the, that's 5 point something million pounds in capacity for each reactor. Not counting the 9 million pounds in the common spent fuel pool on the ground that was washed away, was inundated by 50 feet of water. This thing was on the ground, 50 feet of water over it, ripped it apart, destroyed it, and that stuff was spread all over the site. That's why they were cementing the property out front, plus the detonations, right, from those reactor buildings. 
And so I'm just off my game today. Such is life. I gotta go back in and figure out why that music was playing so loud. And I think my volume is down and that music went up. It somehow happened. Uh, let me come back to this one for a second. So the ocean current, I'm just trying to get my bearings again, but the ocean current at five miles an hour, 24 hours a day, 45 days is on your coastline, not six years. And because it never stopped hemorrhaging over there, every day there's another plume coming into the ocean, so the plumes will never stop hitting your coastline. They've been hitting your coastline for four and a half years. They came here in three or four days by the jet stream, and I know it's hard to accept that the jet streams are real. I know, yeah, Dana, you kooky bastard, Dana. But the jet streams are actually real. I looked it up. Okay? Yeah. And the ocean currents are real. I looked that up too. Right? I, I, I took Ken Buesler's words and turns out the jet streams are real. They're real. That's why they're real. I'm so real. Ah, I'm so real. I'm a nuclear scientist. I'm so clever. I fooled the world. I tricked the world. I got a $120,000 a year job. I couldn't get a job anywhere because no one would hire me where I come from. I went to university. I get a degree. I didn't even have to try. All I had to do was every time somebody said something, I said, no, it's like a banana, stupid. And my teacher loved me. And I said, we got to kill all the humans. My teacher loved me. So, we're back and we're streaming. And it took forever. Assholes. So, I don't think I've ever seen that one happen before either. And then, I'll just come and say hi to everybody. See if we're still here. And so, hang on. I'll bring up Dana. Dana. Hi, Dana. Or no, no, I'll come back over to that one. That way I can see you guys. You guys can see yourselves, right? Hang on. <laughs> As I say goodnight to everybody. Miss Milky, have a good day, everybody. Thank you, Jan, for phoning me. Because I was talking away, man. I was going hardcore. I was sticking it to the men. I was being badass, and they got me cut off, and you missed it. And I'm going to pout after for a couple of hours. I'll be okay. Don't worry about me. Yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah. Cutting me off again, hacking me at computers. There's like eight or nine computers they've taken down in a year and a half belong to us. How many computers have you lost in the last year and a half? How many computers have your friends have go down in the last year and a half? Eight or nine? Huh? Huh? And so, let me come in and say goodnight to everybody. Thank you, Miss Milky. Jan Brooks, you'll find her links below. She never stops. And she's doubled down on supporting us. In the context of, like, she is, like, doubled down on putting out Fukushima information. I don't know if she sleeps anymore. She probably just sleeps. Stood up, making a cup of tea. And when the kettle boils, she wakes up and says, okay, that was enough sleep for the day. And so the radical home goddess. See, I got your name right that time. Yeah, I've been practicing in a mirror. Goddess. You can do it, Dana. Just got to say it. Alex. Thanks again, Alex, for your music, buddy. Uh, Burton Shaw. And, you know, it's just one of those videos, one of those days. But we can't let that stop us. We can't let that slow us down. We can't let that defeat us or, or demoralize us or or get us off our game like I was the whole show. But, I'll be, you know, I kept going as best I could. And so we'll finish out again tomorrow. We'll do it again tomorrow. Forget. We had a rough week, so we're going to do a Saturday show. I'm sorry. Sunday show, a little later than normal. Tomorrow morning I got to take off. You never know. Uh, yeah, thanks, Jan. I know. And Jan, like you say, Jan never stops. And so there's lots of links below, too, of other people. And it's not just me. It's everybody. And Albert, Patrick, uh, Siegfried, Elaine is out there. Uh, Shanikin, 775. We got Candace and Amthurst. And Mickey will show up later. He, he was sick today, or he had to go to the hospital or something. I can't remember. Uh, but I know he couldn't show up today. Tree Wolf. And so, 
Um, what was the point I want to make? So now we're up to 30, uh, 3,400, I think, or 3,500 or something, which is unbelievable. We're on our way to get our TriCaster. And if anybody don't know what a TriCaster is, let's see how, how uh, lucky I get today. Oh, I did find it. Yeah, there it is. And so that, that switchboard you see there, they're like 4,500 to 6,500. And that TriCaster is about 30,000. Uh, but it's a 24 channel. So I have 24 people there. <laughs> and super high quality. But it's got unbelievable, I can make movies and documentaries and it's a true studio. It's just what CNN and MSNBC or BBC or anybody else is going to use. And 10 years ago, it cost you over a million dollars. And you need three or four technicians and you would need just a stupid amount of electricity. Now it's all in this one little package. Put it in a suitcase and take it anywhere and set up shop and be the real deal. But because the future now will be all kinds of interviews and I need to gather up that proper equipment like just to do proper Skype interviews at an individual piece would cost you around five thousand dollars to do it high quality properly with perfect so you can take really bad audio and make it almost perfect you can take background noise and twist it out of there it's just fantastic stuff that you can do with what we got here right now what we're trying to get and so we are one tenth of the way past one tenth of the way of getting this thing and that's that's fantastic, see? To me, that tells that whole story that we will get that. I know, like, I can get a cheaper version for around 12000 But, like, we got that momentum. We might as well get the real deal, and we might as well go to battle. Because that's the only option we got. We are, we, are that, we are the truth of the community out there. We are the facts of the community. We are the people that are educating everybody in the community. And let me come back over here. So Bob, yes, yeah, Sunday we'll do a show. Um, Amthurst, there you go. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a Sunday show. A little later in the day. We'll keep it calm. We'll try anyway. And so we, good night to everybody. Good day to everybody. Candace, thank you everybody for bearing with me. I know, you know, it's just been a rough week for everybody. It's been a tough week for everybody out there that's following these streams we're trying to keep up with this information and you know i'm off my game i'm using a laptop and i'm getting instead of the big normal system that i use a very powerful system with a thousand dollar software so i have the green screen effect and it's it's a much better and it's a much higher quality blah 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 that i put out but i'm not going to stop i'm just not going to do episodes but i'll keep doing what we're doing now because that momentum, we're not going to lose that from here on out. It's just going to get bigger and better every day, every time. That's that's just the way it's going to be. And we're not going to be intimidated and threatened and, and put off by bananas and potato chips and walking in sunshine. Bring them. Okay, so hugs for everybody. Take care, folks. Once again, uh, if, to donate for the TriCaster, you can go to my nuclearproctologist.org. There's a donating button on contacts or on most of the pages. And that's credit cards only. But you can go to PayPal. you find links below this video to PayPal. And you type in my address, Dana, D-A-N-A, Durnford, D-U-R-N-F-O-R-D, at hotmail.com. And, you know, if you don't make a note alongside of it, I'm assuming it's for the TriCaster. But I do need operating money, too. To pay for equipment and replace equipment and to pay for the repairs that are coming and if not I'll find a way to do it but I'm just saying if you want to make a decision and even a dollar five dollars ten dollars and like yesterday and a few days before that we're so lucky a handful of people has brought us up now over to almost thirty five hundred dollars this is like game on we're, we're on our way period and so I couldn't be more prouder and I, and I couldn't be more invigorated to get this job done and get in their faces. Trust me. Anyway, we'll see you Sunday. In a, t t today's Friday, tomorrow's Saturday. Yeah, Sunday we'll do her. Hugs for everybody. Talk you then, folks.